Welcome to Lady J Meet Dudes. I'm Evan. Tyler. Charlie. Oh, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest. Special. We are going to start Special's talking about... Oh, Special. Special. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about whiskey and barbecue. And we have our business partner, the whiskey master and honorary meat dude. <laughs> this That's is Sarah Rosales. Oh, welcome. Hey. Welcome, welcome. Hello. How, are you, how are you doing Hello. today, Sarah? I'm doing so great. Oh, my gosh. So are you great. excited to talk about some whiskey? Always. I'm always excited to talk about whiskey. You know, Sarah knows a lot about whiskey. I met her. We all met. Let's just talk about that. We all met 2013, opening up uh, Radiator Whiskey in Pike's Place Market. Uh, another Pike whiskey bar. Place. Pike Place Market. Thank you for correcting me. You guys worked there longer than me, so you <laughs> do know that. Charlie worked there for like 30 years. I shop at Fred Meyers. <laughs> <laughs> my dad calls Walgreens Walgreens. Walgreens? <laughs> yeah. That's Why do people awful. do that? I don't know. Washington. I don't know. Um, but we all met there 2013, opened up that restaurant and then opened up our restaurant here in 2019. And Sarah is seriously the person who knows the most about whiskey that I've ever met. Um, and I travel the world bartending, Sarah. No, honestly though, (laughs) she is phenomenal. She is phenomenal. She really, uh, puts everybody to shame. It's, it's un- unbelievable. So we're super excited to have her here today to talk about whiskey and how it pairs with meat and barbecue and kind of why we open up a whiskey and barbecue joint. So Sarah, why don't you give us a little bit of your background to, uh, kick things off? Well, um, I drink a lot of whiskey and so that helps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I started at Radiator Whiskey and knew a fair amount when I started there, but really that was what kicked me off. Um, so I love doing research, and so I just would research, 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 and I had all that whiskey at my fingertips at Radiator and here as well. So I taste through so much of it, and um, I've tasted every kind of whiskey that you could possibly imagine. That's kind of like I, I have that privilege of, of being in whiskey bars for so long. So... That's my background. I like whiskey and I drink it a lot. Yep, yep. And you yep. were a researcher before that, weren't you? Scientist. Yeah, yeah. Do you uh, have, same same thing, do you have right? a degree in something? <laughs> I have a degree in molecular biology. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> do your own research. Cellular and developmental molecular biology. Wow. And that's how you can pair all those different flavors together and just create phenomenal whiskey cocktails here at Lady J. I can't even spell those words. Yeah. I don't even know what she said. Mm. I'm, just roll, I'm just rolling with my notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, to start things off, you know, why does whiskey really pair so well with, with barbecue? Well, so we have these two great examples here of, um, I think, probably just the best overall pairing of, of bourbons. I, I prefer bourbons yeah. just because it's a little bit sweeter than, say, barley. And what are those two examples for the people not watching on YouTube? Maker's Mark. Mm-hmm. Maker's Mark, ever hear of it? Yep. And then Wild Turkey 101. Um, these are two very well-known and fantastic, fantastic bourbons. Maker's Mark is a um, sweeter. It's a weeded bourbon, so um, you're replacing the rye, so you're not getting that that sort of spicy characteristic. But I think just as far as an overall bourbon goes with barbecue, it's amazing. It has amazing caramel, vanilla, toffee, um, sweetness. It's, it's perfect, I would imagine, for what your guys are doing with your barbecues and then wild turkey 101 of course wild turkey's probably one of my all-time favorite whiskeys somebody's favorite here huh and it's good charlie's yep. yeah oh yeah Very it's got delicious. a little bit of proof on it too yep. so you can use this to cut through some of the fattier stuff you know charlie got mad that we actually didn't have that on the list you know he's well, like yelling at us he he knew i was gonna bring out <laughs> wild turkey of some sort charlie gets worked up pretty easy though <clears throat> you know uh-huh. Hot i'm you familiar love. with his work <laughs> Maniac. You know, in, in, in whiskey and barbecue, both, you know, deeply rooted in American history and culture, both can have smoky flavors, bold flavor, sweetness, caramelization, and they really, you know, whiskey, a lot of the times can really enhance those, those awesome flavors in barbecue. So, you know, let's, uh, let's, you, you've generously poured us some, uh, some testers here. Oh boy. And we're going to test and <laughs> or taste test some of these whiskeys and kind of talk about what dishes maybe we'd pair them with, why they would go really well with barbecue, and maybe some other options on, you know, some of these are kind of unique. So maybe some other options that are comparable to these that people can maybe find, you know, locally, wherever yeah. they're at. Yeah, these are definitely 
some of the harder to find uh, bourbons, but or and rye, uh, American whiskeys, I should say, but they all have a unique story to them, which is why I'm featuring them, and they're all super, super delicious. So yes. that's you know, if we're gonna be drinking right now, then I figured I'd pull you know, the delicious ones out. Nictors. It's afternoon, so we're can not, you believe it? Just before we taste these, <laughs> yeah. we don't have anything to argue about later. Or yeah, we're good, right? it is kind of a truth <clears throat> serum for me. Oh, so, oh so by the end and of this we're podcast, starting I'm, with it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hear some. She's gonna Coco just Nervioso. Tear us all up. <laughs> <laughs> Coco Nervioso. Love it. Okay, so we're starting with Michter's American. Okay, so tell us about Michter's American. Here. Okay, so Michter's American is an unblended American whiskey. They don't call it a bourbon. Uh, Michter's is, doesn't always tell us what mash bills and why this is not a bourbon, but more than likely it's just because they're using used barrels with uh, bourbons, American bourbon or bourbons, you have to use brand new oak barrels. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is using bourbon soaked barrels. Uh, American whiskey typically has you can add neutral grain spirit to it, but you would ha it would have to say blended American whiskey on it. This okay. says unblended, so Ooh. the Let's reality meat is labels, so this is kind of cool. Yeah. This is probably a high corn, so it's going to be okay. sweet, high corn American whiskey that's been soaked in or has been rested in bourbon soaked barrels. So it's very soft. It's a it's Charlie's favorite whiskey. I just found that out today. Wow, really. Um, what makes it your favorite whiskey? I don't know. It's just like mellow and kind of like rounded or something. It is know? rounded. Mm -hmm. And, you know? and okay. it's low proof. And it has, I tasted through these last night and I was kind of amazed at how long the finish was on this <coughs> because it's low proof and such a soft bourbon. Okay. Usually they fade pretty quickly, but this had a really long finish on it. And can you tell us quickly like how you should taste a whiskey? Just give us a quick rundown. Well, so I taste through two separate nostrils. My left nostril is way better than my right. That's your power nostril. Left. That's Dominant my power. Nostril. That's my power nostril. Dominant nostril. That yeah. should be the name of a cocktail. Dominant, Dominant nostril. nostril. Write it down. Boom. So, um, so I go in, keep my mouth open because you kind of want those vapors to hit like the taste buds on your tongue. Yeah. Go through both nostrils. Like <gasps> Find I, out your power nostril. I think, I think it's my right. And I'm right-handed, and you're left-handed. I so. trimmed my nose hair today. Bro, you're don't busy. go yeah, crazy, though, because otherwise you're just going to get acetone. You don't want just, like, pure alcohol. Okay. Just, like, you know, just tap it in. Just tap. Just tap. Just tap it in. Mm, give me some candied orange. Um, I get a lot of, like, cupcakes on these. Uh, so this is, like, super vanilla icing cupcake. <laughs> you get that, nice. Tyler? Cupcake all day. <laughs> <laughs> Cupcake. Frosting. Wow. <laughs> it is sweet, though. It is very sweet, yeah. So this is not, this Orange. American is not the toasted oak. American. This is not the toasted oak. They haven't made the toasted oak American <laughs> mixers since 2014, I think, and it was by far their best that one. That was the legendary oh, bottle. Oh, my God. Okay. There it is. Okay. I wish. A little, little cupcake. I wish we were drinking that. See, you mm. get a little. I cupcake. got orange first. This is gonna yeah. Be like ASMR because we're gonna be. Like, mm, this is so good. Oh God. <laughs> Fuck is <the> ASMR. <laughs> 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 you know, Sarah knows. Oh dear. Oh boy. <laughs> you gotta get on TikTok. Bro. There we go. Oh dear. <laughs> oh man. So, so yeah. So this so, is light, right? This it's super light. light. Okay. Yeah, it's super light. Um, I personally would think that you wouldn't want to get something crazy bold because it'll just blow this whiskey out of the water. Yeah. I think this is So no a, beef ribs. This is a, yeah. this no is a pork ribs. You would not be doing beef ribs. <laughs> uh, beef ribs, you should not be ordering this. Yeah. This, this is a chicken or pork dish. Yeah, I would agree okay. with that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or even fish? No. What? No? I'm no. just... Oh, no, okay. We just said no. Oh, I didn't hear that. I wasn't paying attention. I was uh, getting too much icing. Yeah. But hey, man, you <laughs> could eat this. Cupcake. You could drink this You're with fish. Your cupcake. With smoked salmon, so, maybe. <clears throat> smoked salmon, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I meant, awesome. Charlie. Come on. <laughs> Some swordfish, maybe? No. Mm. Oh. <laughs> That's what we should do. Just put a whole swordfish on that smoker? God damn oh. it. How long would that take? Okay. Mm. <laughs> wow. This is cool, though. This is a... This is... I've, I don't think I've had this in a while. Maybe back in 2013. 
but like I see what you mean about the finish. There's still things yeah, going on. Yeah, it's still on. going. Yeah. yeah, and it's like getting all kind of like butter, so, buttery. This is kind yeah, of a baby really bourbon nice. for me, mm. but uh, you like that uh, that hot stuff. She I do like the hot she stuff. Likes stuff. Punched in the mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just like the, the the style of music that she listens to. It's hot. It's hot yeah. stuff. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I shouldn't have brought that up. <laughs> hey, we can come on. Hey, we can all agree on one thing. George Michael, Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. No matter who we love. We all go back to Simon and Garfunkel. That's what yep. keeps us together. Yeah. Followed by a little bit of Viking metal. Mm-hmm. A little mm-hmm. shout out to Amon Marth there. Right. A little bit no? of Dave Matthews. Well, little shout, shout out there. Wow. Uh, uh, this is counting crows for Charlie. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> this is Yo, unraveling when you, quickly. <laughs> when you come into the kitchen One early in the morning and counting crows is playing, you know it's going to be a goddamn day. You know it's going to be a goddamn day. That it does not happen. <laughs> that, oh, it, it happens, happens very rarely, but when it happens, the I know. The last time was like probably not here. I oh, put it on. He was here oh, because yeah, uh, I we put were, it on to pump him up. It was when we were uh, wow. COVID time. Uh, it was just the two of us back yeah. there. You guys were just probably going hard already jamming. sipping some of this at noon. Yeah, That's like we're doing time. now. It was different different laws back then. It's okay. It was a it was a bunkhouse. All right, so this <clears> is a lighter whiskey. We don't want to go with big old beef ribs. Probably not a big old heavy smoked brisket. Um, maybe, but usually something lighter. Okay. Yeah. I like it. I Leaner, like it. Softer. Softer. What's next on the agenda? Because I don't want to. I'm just gonna keep sipping this, and then I've been okay. fasting all day, and I'm gonna. He's gonna be in trouble. I'm be in trouble by the end he of really this. is gonna you start telling faster? truths here pretty soon. I don't yeah. need to. Okay, so our next one is Jefferson's Ocean. <laughs> you think you're better than me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna start cold plunging. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Whoa, bro. Okay. Oh. Calm down. <laughs> we digress. Yeah. Jefferson Ocean. Jefferson Ooh. Ocean. So. This guy has been put into a barrel, loaded onto a ship, and sailed around the world. And so the theory behind it is that constant motion of the barrels causes it to get more flavor from the wood, right? Because you're getting okay. the majority... Like, like swirling wine. Yeah, exactly. Glass, the, right? majority <clears throat> of the, the majority of the flavor of bourbon comes from the wood, honestly. Sure, yeah. the grain obviously is important, but you're getting all those vanilla and caramel notes, all those notes that you... That we're saying pairs well with bourbon is coming from wood, and that's kind of cool because like its name is barbecue, right? Like you, you take on so many flavor characteristics characteristics from the wood, so it's kind of like a cool little combination there. Yeah, and then the about. other thing that o- a, uh, aging at sea does is that it brings like this salinity to. I the was just going to ask about the saline level, and really? if that's a stupid question. No, but you're definitely <clears throat> going to get saline in this, cool. uh, just like. Westland or any of those scotches that are aged on the edge of the sea, you get a lot of saline character yeah. from that too, because the wind is blowing and all of Salt that water, stuff. Yeah, just so they in really, the environment all day. they really put these barrels on boats, mm-hmm. and just sail them around. Sail these around are the actually uh, research vessels, usually that Jefferson's oceans are on. So they're also going out and researching okay. whales and you so know whatever just, sea life and stuff yeah, like that. Okay. So they're not just uh, doing it for the whiskey. They're, no, they're, although I did hear that good. they um they used their sailboat as a business expense so that Oh nice. Of course. <laughs> oh hey we, <laughs> we should do that. Just, just <laughs> yes, let's let's use our sailboat. <laughs> <laughs> Can we, can we just get paddle boards to start right. out smaller or something? Like, yeah. I got a canoe, man. Let's, let's grow into this a little bit. Lady J canoe, dog. Uh, let's pay payroll first, and then we'll get the boat. All right. What's next here? Well, so Jet Jefferson's, um, Ooh, I don't what know what you, this? so this, for me, has so much salted caramel. This is such a typical mm. bourbon. It's got vanilla, it's got, but mostly it's that toffee and caramel, those darker candied notes that you get, but then there's a lot of saline, so I... I would call it I like love, the, I love the saline level just because I'm a salty dude anyway. Yeah. What's the salted to- toffee or whatever that mm-hmm. stuff is? That's what it tastes I like to me. some little wow. cocoa For sure. shit going on. You should on. see this guy salt a freaking tenderloin. <clears throat> or All right. Tenderloin, so then bro. what would you pair that with? Mm. That's a little bit more aggressive. Mm-hmm. Like you could definitely venture into the beef program there. Mm-hmm. Um, how about that? Doing Still sweet. Toro in the style of brisket. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. That smaller muscle we were messing around with for a while. <clears throat> yeah, that was fun. And then this one, the finish on this one was insane. I couldn't believe how long. I mean, I'm still tasting the yeah, finish on good. it. And yeah. it's changing. Like, the flavor is still changing right now. Yeah. Um, 
This is a cool one because I've had some really bad Jefferson's Ocean. It's a little creamy before, in there. but yeah. So Silky. they change every year. They change yeah. every they change every voyage. This is voyage twenty four. Voyage. Ooh, wow. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So look for voyage twenty four. Yeah, voyage, voyage twenty four is good. Voyage twenty four is the one. Okay. And okay, and we for, I think we forgot to do it with the Mictors real quick. What are what are some ones that are maybe more comparable that you could find? In, in most stores that would compare to that Mictors. Gosh, America. I mean, Mictors is so light. I would say that it, Maker's Mark is going to be a great one. Okay. Um, this has a little bit more bolder characteristics, but any low-proof, lighter bourbon mm-hmm. um, will work. It won't be as good as Mictors American, but it will yeah. still be delicious. I was going to say Weller, but you're not going to have any better chance finding Weller either. Yeah. What about so, just regular Buffalo Trace? Buffalo Trace would be great. Um, Buffalo Trace is a little Buffalo bit sweeter, though. Hot. Right? But it's also low proof, right? Little, yeah. Is it low proof? Yeah. Buffalo Trace, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what's it what's you know, when we're talking low proof and high proof, what, what do you think would pair well with a low proof whiskey versus a high proof whiskey? So the same reason why we're saying pork and chicken mm-hmm. for mictors, the lower proof you want to do something that's a little bit less bold, right? Higher proof is gonna be good at cutting through fat. Yeah. Um so Rich any sauces. of those brisket yeah any of that stuff uh, anything that has a lot of richness to it i personally would choose a higher proof or at least a bolder bourbon so that you yeah. can cut through the fat of the meat because otherwise something bold like a brisket or something it's gonna take over it's just gonna bl- blow that whiskey it's, out of the it's water. the same idea of pairing you know wines with food and beers and whatever it's like yeah. you know you get a lager with one thing a pinot noir with one thing and same, same exact thing. It's just a different animal, right? Oh, you're, you're foreshadowing to the next episode. Shh. I know, bro. Ooh, talking about wine. Teaser. A little teaser. I'll, I'll cut that clip and we'll use that. Nice job, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was the 24th voyage. This is voyage 24. Voyage 24. And mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. You, do get, mm-hmm. you do get a little cherry on that, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. This, is, this really one like is that. like all those darker notes that I get like mm-hmm. rather than vanilla I get the cherries and the caramels and the toffees and stuff like that okay um, and that is because of the whiskey to to barrel um, it moving around and stuff like that so there's so much contact with the barrel there okay how come that practice isn't why is this so unique? Why is there not like agitators? In, in there is agitators. Is there? And also, have you heard of the whiskey Blackened? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Metallica, Metallica, whiskey. Metallica plays Metallica songs through speakers at a super loud so it sound. Shakes the so it shakes the barrel. How do we not wow. own a whole wall of that here, Sarah? Seriously. I just got tasted on it the other day. It's actually pretty okay. It's made by who makes Will it? it? No, Will it. Will it so Blackened is its own distillery. Okay. And they do special releases where they um, they actually go to different. So, like, they did one with Will it. Uh, they did one with Dave Pickerel, who was with Whistle Pig and mm-hmm. Maker's Mark. In fact, uh, he was a master distiller for Maker's Mark for a long time. Um, he's no longer with us. Rest in peace. Just like my father. There you go. So what would happen if we did that with Bridge Over Troubled Water? <laughs> Do you <laughs> yes. want me to sing? And just let's just rocked it. <laughs> let's just use, let's use. just clarify something real quick. Please. What do. music? Of Metallica's are they playing, and will that keep you from buying it? Because if it's the Black Album, you're not going to buy it. Not me personally. If it's Master of Puppets, you're, uh, ride you're the gonna lightning buy, all you're the way. Buy barrels wow. of that shit. Don't get her going, man. <laughs> just, Don't it's get not her going. Hard to do. That's yeah. You know. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Stop it. <laughs> all right, all right, and our third whiskey here. We actually did this for our Whiskey Wednesday. We did. did we? Yeah. Oh, we yeah, did we did Wednesday. yesterday. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be the boldest of the three. It's okay. got a little bit of proof on it. It's rye. So uh, rather than, so the, what these guys are doing is they're, they're blending high proof rye, or sorry, uh, high rye mash bills with low rye mash bills, and then they're blending them together. Um, it's double oaked, which means Ooh. they're pulling mm. it out which of the... It means it's delicious. It means it's delicious. Ooh, okay. Uh, they're pulling it out of the initial barrel, and they're, they're throwing it into a second barrel. The second barrel, what's cool about these guys is they're throwing it into a toasted barrel Ooh. that has something called a wave stave. So it has these little, um, what do you, like little waves in the wood itself. And so it's the same concept as Jefferson's. You're just getting more... Surface area. Surface area, whiskey to barrel, whiskey okay. to wood. Um, and 
you definitely taste wood on this one. I okay. mean, this is an oak bomb. So if that's your oak thing, bomb. I mean, you can, you can't, if those you aren't, tell. I mean, yeah, yeah, like you can, it. if you look at yeah. the color itself, yeah. it's just crazy how dark it is. So Sagamore Yum. Spirits Double Oak Rye. So rye it's has like a tendency dessert. to bring out like minty spearmint type flavors and so for me like you ever have one of those uh, toothpicks that are flavored in mint yeah. or spearmint like that's what I get out of this wow. so get much wood pocket. but like still that mint it's like when you go to like those Italian restaurants the Andy's you, Mints yeah. I love the Andy's <laughs> Mints <laughs> Andy's Mints those little but that's chocolate you know my kids uh, eat the shit out of uh, dude and you, you know I never, I never I never tasted it I never Sorry. tasted that spearmint until you said, like, right as I, right as you said it, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, like, I totally I get that. Kind of want to say that too. Hold on, let's let this huge FedEx truck drive by. Why get yada. out of here, bro! Come on, I'm trying mm. to shoot a podcast. So, yeah, I never, wow. I never did that until you just said it either. Honestly, that's, that's not the first thing that would have been hit me right in the face. Oh my god! Well, this, to me, this you has tasted a gajillion whiskeys. I have not. Yeah, but. You know, always the mm-hmm. initial notes that you pick up on are always the kind of the same. It's like caramely, butterscotchy, you know, just because of the aging and, and the way that it's made. But to come up with, get some herbaceousness on top of all yeah. that. Well, so that's a great example of what your, um, the base grain is, mm. how that changes the flavor of the whiskey. Ooh. So this rye is going to be, is going to have a lot of those spicier yeah, yeah. notes as opposed to corn. Mm-hmm which is adding a lot of sweetness and more rounder notes to it. Yum. Wow. So. I haven't even tasted that yet. It's what like makes it dry your mouth out? <laughs> is that the tannins? It's, it's, it's got to be the tannins, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, for sure. Because um, I've had some, there's, there's a whiskey coming out of Oregon that uses some, or not Oregon, sorry, Colorado, that uses some kind of Colorado oak. And I take a sip of it, and, I mean, it's like it rips the saliva right off of my tongue and that's really? from the wood yeah for sure Dang. definitely yeah it tastes wood like crazy oh mm-hmm. yeah there's so much oak on this so this so. is gonna hold up oh yeah to yeah yeah that's, big, that's, to the your, that's, ribs, your, that's right? your big hitter for sure right yeah. there mm-hmm. yeah this would be great with beef ribs yeah and, and then it doesn't have a lot of sweetness to it the yeah. way these other ones have had so um it's not going to be cloying as well so i think you it's could like a classic combination of maryland whiskey with barbecue <laughs> oh. Wow! Okay. All right, it's Maryland. It is from Maryland. Yep. Oh. But you don't see very often. No. Oh, it's from Maryland. I didn't know where you're going. I'm like, mm. okay. Yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> That's good, though. It is really good. I didn't even try this yesterday. We did it for Whiskey Wednesday. Do you get a little fennel? Yep, for sure. A little black licorice. Ooh, burnt sugar. Well, this to me, like, I'm if you were. Yeah. I don't get oranges, but I get candied <laughs> oranges. <clears throat> wow. This was to me like if you Come were going to creme brulee, but instead of mm. the custard, you just creme brulee some wood. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> That's All right. Sounds delicious. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, this is the next dessert special here. Yeah. <laughs> Cedar plank creme brulee. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So what <clears throat> would, would be comparable this one mm. you know like another big bold wild whiskey yeah uh anything so more on the lines even though this is going to be a bit sweeter the wild turkey 101 mm-hmm. is going to be more on this lineup of uh whiskeys but this is a very very unique whiskey there's not a whole lot of other whiskeys out there that has this much oak yeah. on it so you would want to find something double oaked like woodford reserve has a great double oaked okay. bourbon um, it doesn't have quite those same spicy characteristics, but it definitely has those wood notes to it. Yeah. Is there a lot of double oaked rice? No. Right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Not really. Mm. Wow. Still so, going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's still hitting. It's a big one. Hangs out. Black licorice. Still hanging. We're so, still chilling. So what is your, I'm going to put you on the spot, Sarah, what is your favorite whiskey? Wow. Okay. Good. One. All time. Yep. Ooh. Of all time uh, was 2013 Thomas Handy. Mm. Thomas H. Handy, Sazerac Rye. You still uh, got that left? No. That's gone. God, I wish. Uh, that's, that was my all-time favorite whiskey. I remember that was the first time I ever got floored by a whiskey. You mean but, so drunk oh, so. you fell over? <laughs> <laughs> that was not the first time, yeah, you no. fucking liar. That was Victor's Rye. <laughs> okay. uh, I will pull out one that is a little bit more accessible. 
do it. This is by far one oh, of yeah. my favorite Very. whiskeys out there. Um, I love the Wild Turkey Distillery. Mm. I It's probably overall probably one of my favorite distilleries. So that Wild Turkey Rare Breed. This is Wild out. Turkey Rare Breed. It okay. has some proof on it. It's got nice sweetness. It's just for me, as far as price goes, you can't find a better yeah. bourbon as far as I'm concerned. Bang for buck. Bang for, for buck. For sure. Yeah. Um, that's, that's and this sure. is a great one. It's not like the most accessible bourbon in the world, but you can get it. And it it's a high proof bourbon that you can drink with a brisket for sure. Okay. Cool. Nice. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yep. What were you guys drinking when that when the infamous photo was taken? <clears throat> Knob uh, Creek. Knob Creek. <laughs> Knob Creek many, barrel proof. Many Knob Creeks. Many Knob <laughs> Out of the barrel. <laughs> wow. That should... That should be like the cover the of the blog. Of yeah. It's right here. My, should I pull it up on my no. phone? It's on my favorite list. No, we got to get like also, written approval from these guys first. Also, I believe Charlie had rug burdens on his elbows. Do you not remember that part? What? From the picnic table. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't remember. I was blacked out. Because he's going like this. <laughs> <laughs> It was the vinyl, like, fake wood yeah, like table. Yeah, like Trex. Trex table. <laughs> yeah. And Charlie's like, I got fucking rug burns on my elbows. I was like, Oh, my what? God. I do not remember that. Wow. I mean, for what? obvious reasons. Oh, but like, we awesome. Let's just tell the story very quickly. Oh, we yeah. went to go pick out a Knob Creek barrel in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And it, we left at 9 o'clock in the morning. And all we could do was stop at Starbucks beforehand i had my husband with me and um he's not a whiskey drinker so he gave all of his extra sips to charlie extra sips out of the barrel (laughs) out of the barrel so this is a barrel strength right so cast strength charlie drank all of the extra and i just drank all of my full ones and uh, there was i was taking the whiskey thief which is the thing that you throw into the barrel pull it out and i'm just pouring as much as i could in my barrel or into my glass, nine ten o'clock in the morning, no food. Breakfast. Just going. So uh, this is breakfast. Charlie and I got wasted. No. Real I've never drunk. been drunk before. Wow. We hugged. So yeah, that goes and there's, there's two non touchers. Footage. Yeah. Two non touchers. Yeah. Yeah. Hugging. It's so it's like the greatest the, the, photo ever. The best part of the photo mm-hmm. is the walleye. <laughs> yeah. Sarah's oh, going, yeah. 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 One eye going that way, one eye going... That's almost when hurts. Ooh. Long time ago. Ooh, long <laughs> time ago. Long time it was ago. a long time ago. Come on. Uh, many, many years. <clears throat> many moons. So During our youth. <laughs> <laughs> the youths. The youths. The youths getting crazy. You know, yeah. getting back on track here, though, we talk a lot about Wagyu beef. And, you know, some people, people buy a lot of Wagyu beef here, eat a lot of Wagyu beef. What are some cool whiskeys that might go well with... Wagyu beef, like a really rich Wagyu. Well, first of all, this Michter's American, I think, is a great one. It's light, and it's not going to overpower the beef, and the beef isn't going to overpower the um, the bourbon. But I also have some more examples. This guy here. here we go. Oh. This is Westland Colere, okay. and cool. Westland's awesome. Westland is awesome. I can't say enough great they're things right about out, them. They're like right down the street here. So yeah, yep. those are our peeps. I I think they're one of the most amazing distilleries. This is their Calere, which is their barley terroir sort of um, collection where they are working with a local grain place that... It's it's a Skagit, right? It's Skagit, yeah, Skagit Malting Company. And they are using different kinds of barley that you would not normally see in whiskey production or even in big um, commodity production. And so... They are using very specific barleys, and then they're distilling it. And then every time they release a new Colere, they're using a different barley. Wow. Um, and it's light, and it's actually relatively young. It's, like, literally, I think, five days under two years old, I think, is what they... I can't remember now. Roughly. Oh, three years. Five days under three okay. years old. Uh, and it's a beautiful, beautiful whiskey, and it is is delicate, so I think it would go really well with... Something like um, Wagyu fat. Wagyu fat. Mm-hmm. Wagyu fat. Smell. Look at how. Oh, it's so fruity. Mm, yum. You're, you're fruity. That smells good. It does you smell good. Smell too here. Get your dominant. Nostril. I'm using both. Dominant nostril. Dominant nostril. Both nose holes. Yep, yep, I kind of okay. just have one big one. Oh yeah. One big mm. nose hole. Mm. Okay. 
Oh, and see. then um, <clears throat> we, uh, do you remember Glenn Moran G Nectar Dior? That yes. was another, mm. oh my God, that would go so good with Wagyu Fat. Didn't we do a dinner with that? I don't remember, maybe. I don't think so. But we, uh, Nectar Dior is Glen Morangy that's been double aged in um, Sauternes. Sauternes. And so Sauterne Ooh. is a, a sweet wine that has been grapes that have been infected with noble rot. So it just like makes, turns all of the grapes, it just concentrates all of the sugars into it. So Sauternes is like a really nice dessert wine, but it's been barrel aged, second barrel aged in. Um, barrels that had been holding Sauterne cast. Oh my gosh. So beautiful, delicate, Dang, perfect. Okay. I want to get this. That sounds elite. It's elite. It is elite. <laughs> Elitists. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, we talk a lot about the quality of meat, um, starting with great quality meat, and then, you know, having that end up being amazing barbecue. Uh, does the quality of, like, the raw materials for whiskey necessarily play that big of a role as it does maybe in barbecue, or is it kind of like, doesn't I that. mean, I think it depends on the whiskey. I wouldn't say corn was that important. Yeah. Um, They're using corn from all over the place. But Westland is a great example of the raw material changing and being important to the, the flavor of the whiskey. Yeah. Uh, there's certain wheat whiskeys, like winter wheat, that Maker's Mark uses in theirs. And um, triticale is another wheat that comes out of eastern Washington that they're using in wheat whiskeys. Uh, in dry fly. So okay. in that sense, yes, that's going to change the flavor. But if you're talking about the straight corn, I wouldn't say so much. Yeah. Okay. okay. Charlie, cool. what's, what's your favorite whiskey? Mm, I like Russell's 10. Oh. Oh. Russell's 10 oh, here. Yeah, yeah, me too. Like, <laughs> Damn it. That was mine. What about you, Chef Tyler? What, what about you? Arete tequila. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> his favorite whiskey is tequila. Yeah. <laughs> does, does whiskey come in tequila barrel? Wow. <laughs> well, you know, doesn't that one? What's that one? Oh, yeah, Copperworks. Copperworks, yeah. Copperworks whiskey is barrel aged in the Arete tequila barrels? Uh, they are, They did release one, yeah. Yeah. That if was. I had to give you an honest answer, it would be probably what Sarah likes least about whiskeys that are softer and a little bit more mild, more sippers like this right like here. Ba- like yeah. baby bourbons? Baby bourbon. Yes. <laughs> okay. There's it's nothing wrong with being a baby, right? Tyler. Like, <laughs> it's like it's like the tenderloin <laughs> of whiskey, <laughs> right? The whiskey. It's just user, Is that right? It's okay. user friendly. Yeah, it's, it's very it's soft. It's soft. It's yeah. not super fatty. Yeah. Well, it's what's your favorite, technical. Evan? Man, Dave you Matthews. know, I, I love Dave Matthews, but I like the, uh, I like a lot of the Elijah Craig's. Like if I'm out mm-hmm. just buying, you know, going to like a wine mart or whatever the hell, you know, I'll, I'll look at the Elijah Craig's. Um, I did like that Hill Rock, Solera Age that oh, we got yeah, out of New Hill York. Hill Rock was great. Dave yeah. Pickerel. <clears throat> Okay, was it? Uh, yeah. I, for some reason, I like just flocked to that one. That's I really, one. really liked that what one. What about this question? Yeah. What if you're at a bar that's not a super whiskey nerd bar, and you got to drink something out of the well? Wild turkey. Oh, out of the well? Well, not you're well. Not. Okay. It's like basic. <laughs> Wild turkey the 101. Well. Charlie's, Usually. Charlie's drinking Jim Beam all day. Mm, yeah. I would drink that. Wild turkey. If they uh, had it. Knob Creek. I, I just went down to Olympia recently, and we went to a lot of bars that didn't have a huge whiskey selection, and all of them had Knob Creek, and all of them had Wild Turkey 101. Okay. And I was not unhappy with either of those. I mean, not even remotely unhappy with either of those. So. Oh. Cool. That's dope, dude. Mm-hmm. I like mm-hmm. it. I like mm-hmm. it. Well, so what's better, barbecue or whiskey? Do we come to the conclusion? Depends whiskey. You're asking. Whiskey. <laughs> if you're asking me. <laughs> That's why you're an honorary <laughs> meat dude, Sarah. Uh, well, do we have any finishing thoughts on why this pairs so well? I don't it's because it's delicious. You They're both good job. Yeah. delicious. Yeah. That's why. And, we, and they have them here. That's why we do. That's why we do what we do. Yeah. There's a lot of overlapping flavors in both of them, yeah. and I think that's why they do so well. Nice. We are meat and whiskey. We are meat and whiskey. Plus the history yeah. of barbecue and bourbon. Yeah. I mean, that's a, it's a huge American tradition in yeah. both the respects. South. And so, you know, Sarah will be a reoccurring guest with us. So maybe like next time we should talk about like getting into some of the history of it. I think that would be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Maybe our While list- we're listeners can throw testing. us out some questions she can answer. Yeah, oh. that would be cool. Q&A with Sarah. I just won't, I just won't uh, give you any of the TikTok questions because Near. those are really mean. 
Oh. So. People on TikTok are so mean. Oh, 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 oh. I'm clipping that. I'm clipping that. Cut. I'm going to throw you under. Throw you Cut. under the bus. <laughs> That's why I don't. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, let's sign it off here for the Lady J Meat Dudes. I'm Evan. Tyler. Charlie. And Sarah. Da -da -da. Boom. Peace. Satellite. <laughs> <laughs> Exit light.